Haycock 45 here with the Tika, the T3X. Y'all been asking for it, so got one from Buds. And uh, <laughs> I've been having a little fun with it. I like it, yeah. So we'll talk about it. I thought I'd start out trying something at 230 yards, even though I'm not bench resting. You know, I've got the scope on it, and I'm, I'm going to try to hit it. That, that plate we normally shoot with the in the range two videos over there. I don't know if you can see it from here. Sure, I'll be able to. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to put one in. That was an empty. Damn. All right. If I am steady enough today to come close. Oh, it went out pretty good. All right. <laughs> That's what I want to do. Let's hit the gong on this hill while we're at it, just to wake him up. Okay. I got an empty under the hammer, of course. Let's, let's go down to the shooting table. I just want to hit that rascal out there, 230. Let him know we're here, because we can't see him from down here. Yeah, this is a pretty nice, and uh, I am so glad y'all have asked me about this so many times, and I'm so glad to finally get one. Because you know I like Seiko, Saco, right? And uh, that's who makes this. Good rifles. And they're not quite as expensive as a Seiko, Saco, right? About uh, 11, 1200 bucks or something for this. This is the, uh, the, the Tika T3X. Uh, you know, it, it's a what a tactical com, uh, see tactical compact rifle. I think it's, yeah, it's what the model it is, and uh, it's uh, it's a good feeling rifle. Gosh, the stock, even the length is is nice. I, I don't feel compelled to put an extender on it. I, I really don't. I, it would probably help. And uh, of course, I got an empty under the hammer right I pull it that's what I do a lot with lever guns bolt guns if I take a shot I got rounds in it and I know I'm gonna be messing with it a little bit I, uh, I don't eject the cartridge you know, if I eject the cartridge guess what that does it puts another live one in and, and then I need to either shoot or empty you know shoot them all out or do something with it okay so this is my method uh, you know safety method so so yeah, it's cool. And by the way, I'm shooting this stuff from Federal. This ammo, it is uh, Fusion. Yeah, it is 6.5 Creedmoor, which is a very popular cartridge these days, isn't it? Uh, I think it's so gotten so popular, there's almost a backlash I sense from people, especially more traditionalists. Uh, you know, there's still a lot of the 308, and, and we all do. But it's really taken a chunk out of the, the 308 world, hasn't it? And, uh, does does in a lot of ways i guess most of what the 308 does 30 out six and other rounds it, well, you know, it's no big mystery the swedish mauser the round has been so popular for so many decades and uh this is just kind of a variation on that you know and you know that's one of my favorite rounds so i thought i'd get it in that chambering just made sense to me yeah and I, you know i've got a few more rounds in that magazine holds 10 so let's just take a couple more. You want to? While we have them. All right. Let's hit that jug right away. <laughs> yeah, okay. I wonder what a, a 6.5 Creedmoor would do to that. I wonder what it'll do to, uh, I don't guess it'll hurt the animals. Let's shoot that turkey over there, top row. Boom. Yeah. I'll mainly shoot the red plates, like on the left. And in the middle. Oh, I knew that was off. I knew that was on. I knew that was on. <laughs> All right. How about let's finish up, I think it's the last round, with a Kentucky 2-liter. <laughs> showered him didn't it so yeah we got the polymer stock and that might not be your first love you know uh when you, you get a think of a really nice uh, rifle accurate great cartridge and all that you might prefer wood although you know if it is uh, <laughs> a new world 
and uh, you know most people, especially hunters that, that know, are out in harsh conditions, climbing the mountain in the snow, dragging the rifle in the the, the mud or whatever. You, you actually many of you prefer a nice polymer stock, you know, good grip on it and all that, because you're going to mess up wood anyway. This one actually, uh, this is this piece here, pistol grips are replaceable. You need different sizes and configurations for that. It's pretty cool, and. Uh, yeah, just uh, from from what I've read, uh, this they they seem to have tried been attempted to make a really practical uh, hunting rifle or I guess hunting rifle out of this thing. You got a wide ejection port here. You got a nice bolt handle. It really lends itself just like my Seiko. Imagine that uh, Bavarian. I mean, you just grab that thing. The, the scope is not in the way at all, and, and work it. So it, it's a I love that that big handle and that that throw. It's got the metal uh, protection around that part of the bolt back here. They, they uh, brag about that, protecting the firing pin and everything. Kind of cool. And a, and a really strong lug on this thing. I don't know how many of you are not familiar at all maybe with the uh, uh, Tika. They, again, they're made by Seiko, Sako. That's my new name for that company, Seiko Sako. That way I please everybody. In fact, when I get a carbine out from now, I think I'll call it a carbine carbine. <laughs> But uh, we pronounce it most of us uh, Seiko over here, but it is Sako. And uh, so that's a nice thing right there. It just feels great, almost like my Bavarian. And uh, what else about that? I love the, the buttstock. Like I say, I don't feel like I need to put an extender on that. Feels great. I understand they have a, they've got, I don't know, some kind of material inside that stock to keep it silent. You're out in the woods and, you know, sometimes polymer can, you know, as you know, if it's hollow, it, 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 it doesn't ring when you bang it against something or a limb, but it, it's just like, you know, clicking a barrel or something. Ten round magazine. If it were mine, I'd have an extra mag, of course, because I miss a lot. But, uh, you know, detachable mag, kind of nice. Like I say, 11, 1200 bucks. I don't know, depending on where you find it. The scope is mine uh, in mount and all that. It comes uh, with the rail, just like you see it there and available in various you know calibers chamberings of course does not come with a suppressor <laughs> comes with that thread protector right so it is nice and uh i'll uh oh i don't do that not supposed to lay them over on the bolt are you i know that's a no-no and uh i'll let that get cool i'll just take that take that off it, it's been fun shooting it with the suppressor and uh it uh let's open up the bolt make sure we're definitely clear that's the thing uh, the manufacturers have learned how to to thread the a barrel and then conform a thread protector to where it looks fine you know john had to it confess we had i don't know what i forgot what the rifle was out here we did a video where it didn't even know it had a thread protector on it and it was threaded you know until we did a range two so then we put a suppressor on it because i don't know we just sort of it's kind of a new thing. Uh, so many rifles uh, are, are threaded. So, you know, appreciate the uh, sounds for Central for that. All right, so we'll load him up again. Shoot him without that. See if it shoots without a suppressor. Uh, what else about it do you want to know? So there's the, uh, the Creedmoor, 6.5 Creedmoor. It's a pretty nice round. And I, I, it's been pretty available, I think, everywhere I, I see it. Seems like in most of the gun shops. Uh, you know, it's weird. It has been strange the last couple of years. It'd be 30-30 or some random round that you just can't find anywhere. 38 special, it, it varies. You know, who knew? A hunting round? You know, is everybody stocking up on those? I guess they are. Uh, but I think this has been fairly available. Maybe because nobody wanted it. No, it seems to be pretty popular. Uh, any, any kind of rifle like this, I mean, these days, it, it's going to be chambered in it, isn't it? So uh, I, I don't have anything chambered in it, but uh, that I own partly because I, I have the Swedish Mauser and uh, a couple of three firearms chambered in it. And I really like it. It's a lot like this. If I were a hunter or a long range competitor or whatever, I would definitely have it, right? Okay, so uh, anything else on there you wanted to see up close? I showed you that. And the barrel is cold hammer forged. And, uh, you know, there's just uh, kind of, you know, at first I wasn't sure about that mag release, but that's kind of neat. It's ambidextrous. 
and you can also use it with either hand right? ambidextrous it's pretty cool the trigger is very 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 nice and uh, many of you already know this but shooting just because you have a scope on your gun telescope it, like shooting at 230 yards at that now the plate's not lighting matches that there I go laying on the bolt oh, oh, y'all give me a hard time with them the uh, you know it's whatever that big around out there but it's 230 yards uh, and that's a challenge for me at least, you know, standing and shooting. Just because I have a scope doesn't make it a lot easier. Now you can tell where your sights are, but now who amongst us can just lock in and the sight's not moving out there? <laughs> it, 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 oh, you ready for this newsflash? It magnifies your sight, whether it's on, whether it's off, the movement of it. Yeah, it magnifies where your sight is. <laughs> and uh, you know, sometimes it's distracting because it shows all your vibration and movements and all that kind of thing. But it, uh, but uh, well, I was gonna make a point there. Forgot what it was. It was a point about, oh yeah. Yeah, I'm not totally done. The point was about the trigger. Uh, because you're, you're, you're moving around, I mean, you are, you don't mean to be, but you can't hold it perfectly steady. And, uh, and so you're seeing it, and so what you do, as with almost any shooting, offhand at least, uh, well, any shooting really, you're coordinating your trigger break with when the sights are where you want them, when you break the trigger, right? And so here's another news flash that works out a lot better if you have a nice trigger, crisp light trigger, and that's what you have with this, okay? <laughs> okay, you knew I'd make a point eventually with that, didn't you? If I, if I shot this paper, no, let's shoot it. There's your safety right there, right handy. Yeah, it's a nice gun. Try to hold above it. Boom. All right, how about a pin? Another two liter. Yeah, get rid of Kentucky. <laughs> and Tennessee, <laughs> Alabama. And who's green? The Boston Celtics? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, nice. How about the smallest red plate over there? Whatever that is. There it is. Boom. Top. So nice, nice, nice. Oh, there's a little bit of cinder on that barrel. There was a little bit of cinder on that barrel. <laughs> Oops, another bullet, another bullet. But that's not a problem when you're living in a target-rich environment. I'll shoot a couple more now and let you go. So Tika, if you're not familiar with it, uh, you know, and if you're not, you may not be familiar with uh, Saco, guess where they are? They're somewhere in New Mexico. No, they're not. They're in Finland, okay? Finland. And, uh, yeah, famous for making exquisite rifles, okay? Uh, you know, Saco, Seiko really is, and this is one of their lines. Now, I hate to say it's their, their cheaper line of rifles, because everything that comes out of there, you know, is just really, really quality, I think. And uh, uh, y'all have these guns. You know more about them than I do. Y'all been recommending them, wanting me to get one for ever. So uh, let, tell us what you know about them. If you have one, what model do you have? And why is it so good? Why do you like it so much? Okay. Uh, I sort of have an idea why, because I like this one. The ergonomics of it are wonderful. And you know, and I, yeah, another newsflash. I'm a big old ugly guy. Everything doesn't fit me well, right? Unless it's custom. But this thing, it fits me well and feels really good, just like my uh, my uh, Bavarian, my Lady 5 Seiko, Saco. Uh, you know, maybe everybody in Finland is 6'8". Anybody been there? Uh, but yeah, they just, they fit me well. I like it. Uh, and then the quality of it seems really, really strong. Uh, I mean, all by all accounts, it's, uh, it's hard to beat. So, you know, Tika, if you weren't familiar with the name, uh, it might be something you want to remember. T3X, and, and I'm not familiar with all the various models. They have a lot of them, of the Tika, T3X even. You know, 
this one again is the compact tactical tactical compact rifle and it's it's more you know has a little bit of a tactical look you know it's all black and everything it's uh, threaded and then they have more uh, traditional rifles of the same same model with wood and everything one reason i i as i was looking through them i uh to to obtain one from buds and the website they had a, quite a few of them but i uh i uh i, I didn't want to go through that business i wanted one with the picatinny rail on it and that's this had that and i'm not sure which others do but this compact tactical version does and I look great. I've got scope mounting, pop on there and scope and red dot, whatever I want. Whereas one that needs a certain kind of scope rings and all that, I, you know, do they fit? What rings do you need with this rifle? I didn't want to get into that. Okay. Just for something I want to have for a short period of time. Okay. No, man, I would do that if I really needed to. One or two felt like it was important. Okay. So, and I kind of like a detachable magazine. That's another thing that makes it more tactical, I guess. So we got a couple more rounds. All right, not much. Oh, there's a pumpkin down there, almost rotten. So let's finish him off. Let's turn this thing down. It's, it, I have it on, yeah, I still have it on five or six from where I was shooting at 230 yards. I must have shot low or it just went through it. <laughs> How about a little, uh, uh, I, I guess it won't hurt the gong. <laughs> well, I already shot it once, didn't I? So, damage done, if it does. All right. Sweet rifle. Many of you already know that, I guess. Uh, if, uh, yeah, again, I'm not selling Tika. <laughs> If you know something about the Tika rifles, the Tika T3X, there's a real negative, let me know. Um, I guess I have a lot of rifles I pick up or grab. Uh, socks too short, it doesn't feel great to me. Or, you know, and of course, so many of them, I don't have a scope to put on it. Or I can't, there's no sights on it. They don't come with a sight. So it's a little bit, bit of a weird proposition to, like if I sit out, if I were a serious hunter, and I wanted to review a lot of hunting, bolt action, hunting rifles and that kind of thing. I would, I would have to, uh, you know, I'd have to do things a little bit differently, you know, and make sure I've got scopes and the proper mounts for various kinds of rifles and, and all that sort of thing. Uh, so, but I, so I don't do it that often, but I, I, I like a bolt gun, but, and I really like a rifle that fits me. Oh man. And this one fits really well. So anyway, uh, let us know what you think of Tika, and if you've ever had one, if it's something you considered, or I don't know, they're a little too pricey, you don't really want to pay that much for one, but you know, a good rifle, you know, it's not going to be 200 bucks, so, so I guess 11 or $1,200 is not like crazy expensive, but it, you can get something a lot less, can't you? Yeah, especially these days, you know, Savage or a, a Ruger, uh, yeah, in fact, you can, I, I really, and think through that a little bit. Yeah, you can get some really accurate rifles that will do the job for what three, four, five, six hundred dollars easily. Yeah, so you are paying more uh, for one like this, but it, it is a nice rifle at least, and it's not two or three thousand. So the Tika T3X uh, is kind of my take on it. Uh, if it looks interesting to you, look it up and learn more about the specs than I gave you. Okay, life is good. Oh yeah, that's better. This is a great gun for defense. Oh hey, didn't see you guys there. Uh, while I've got you here, I want to remind you of our friends over at Talon Grips and Ballastall. Talon Grips makes uh, grips, can you believe it, uh, for all different types of firearms. You can get rough texture or more of a rubberized texture. Uh, it just sticks right on there. You know, really affordable, really cool option to in improve the grip for your handguns um, or, or rifles. Uh, so please check them out at talongungrips.com. You'll be glad you did. And also Ballastol. Uh, Dad has been using Ballastol for many years. It's a cleaner and a lubricant, and it's non-toxic. Uh, it works really great, and we're happy to have them on board since it's been a part of our shooting endeavor for a very long time. So go to ballastol.com, talongungrips.com, 
And also, while you're out there, I'm juggling all these things here. Also, uh, while you're on the internet, please do check out our other social media like Hickok45 on Facebook. There's also Hickok45 on Twitter, the real Hickok45 on Instagram. There's a John underscore Hickok45 on Instagram where I do some things. There's Hickok45.com. Uh, you can find us also on GunStreamer. So check out all that stuff and then watch more videos.